Today's session is brought to you by Emerald Financial Group. Emerald exists to help investors make informed decisions about their investments. We offer a range of services to help educate, support, and motivate everyday people to get involved in the stock market. We offer services for any experience level. Now, today I have my colleague here with me, Sam Green. Uh, welcome, Sam. Now, Sam is a equities analyst and derivatives advisor. We work very closely together on the trading desk here for Emerald Financial, uh, and you know we're the ones you know that are putting out recommendations to our clients and supporting uh, clients as they call in when they need a bit of help with their trading or their investing. Now, today, guys, what we're going to do is actually dive into a space that we've been talking about a lot in the past six months. This space is likely to be one of the more outperformers in the coming years. And what we're talking here today about is metals and mining. So commodities, so think iron ore, think uh, you know copper, think anything to do with metals and mining. Uh, now a lot of people, and I'm reading a lot of articles about this as well, uh, and, and this is really just highlighting what our view's been internally for a while now, uh, but you know, the whole big next commodity super cycle, Sam. That's what, what we're here to talk about today. Uh, the reason why we're bringing this up to you again today, guys, is we're now starting to see a lot more people talking about it. And we're also starting to see a bit of more movement once again in that space. So Sam, look, uh, let, let's, let, let, I'd like to hear your view right now on this space. Uh, what commodities in particular do you think are gonna outperform in the next few years? Absolutely. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head. We are about to move into a period where, you know, a lot of commodities perform extremely well. And just the economic dynamics around the world are really playing into that. We've got a world that needs to, you know, try and reduce their carbon emissions. And to do that, you're going to be using uh, a lot of metals in, in sort of more modern high tech functions, things like copper, cobalt, nickel, aluminium. Uh, but you know, even the more traditional ones, things like steel, will uh, will be used for, for you know manufacturing um, uh, certain things. Uh, and then you've also got a large amount of infrastructure spending that's going to come from Western nations and probably developed na developing nations as well. Um, and you know, they're going to be building transport networks. They're going to be building uh, you know just the, the next layer of, of of infrastructure to help their economies grow into this century. Uh, it's been a long, long time since, for example, the US had a large nationwide infrastructure project. Uh, and that's what we're likely to see with, uh, with you know, President Biden's you know, 2.2 to 3.2 trillion dollar package this year. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's necessarily any one thing uh, that will just shoot the lights out. Rather, there's a whole lot of commodities that should do extremely well. Uh, and we have a particular focus on uh, copper, nickel, cobalt, and uh, you know, battery and, and high tech technology uh, technology metals. Yeah. So I guess uh, to highlight, you know, we, we've talked about the Biden administration just here, and I'll just just go. Maybe we'll go into a little bit more detail on this, but there was a massive backflip from Trump into Biden in the sense of climate change mm -hmm. and targets on climate change and green energy and the like. We know the Biden administration are very pro on going towards green energy and green cars and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, what type of materials or what type of commodities, I guess, are gonna best benefit from the technology moving towards that green energy? Yeah, so green energy is a very sort of uh, talked about theme at the moment. And it's kind of estimated that there's going to need to be at least $30 trillion spent on uh, moving our energy sources to uh, clean energy uh, over the next 50 years. And that $30 trillion basically means, you know, building wind turbines, uh, building solar farms, you know, building the transmission infrastructure to allow this, um, you know, uh, utilizing electronic ve electric vehicles. Um, and in terms of the commodities that will likely do very well there, things like copper, um, there's an awful lot of copper in an electric motor and an electric turbine, uh, you know, all the, uh, all the battery metals. I'm less fond of the lithium, uh, and we can talk about some of the economics there, but uh, anything, you know, nickel, cobalt, um, even aluminium, uh, a lot of battery housings or even, you know, wind turbine blades and things like that, uh, a lot of the aluminium will be needed. Um, so anything that sort of uh, suits the sort of um, you know high technology or modern technology dynamic, but we have a particular focus to copper, 
because it's used in just about everything. Yep, so look, and that's that's what I've been reading as well. Nickel and copper, probably the two majors I've been reading on in the green energy space. There's going to be huge demand in that area over the next, what, 20, 30 odd years mm -hmm. as uh, everybody around the world, are, you know, m most of the larger economies try and move towards mainly green energy and, and carbon neutrality. So um, it's going to be an interesting uh, area to watch really as it plays out in the mining space. And, you know, we're hearing a lot more on the demand side, not a lot about the supply side. Uh, BHP did come out fair enough today talking about supply a little bit, but broadly we haven't heard a lot just yet on the supply side, have we? No, and I think uh, the world is really sort of about to go through a bit of a lack of supply from a lot of these key metals. Yeah. And the reason is that uh, mining a metal, it takes a lot of time to get to the point where you're actually digging it out of the ground. You've got to find it, you've got to prove the resource, you've got to you know, create your feasibility studies, You've got to get funding for it. You've got to dig the mine out and then you start producing it. And that process takes anywhere from at the quickest for some metals. You can do it in a few years. Usually it takes, you know, a decade, uh, well, up to a decade to really get it going. Uh, and one of the things that we saw from about 2013 to about 2017 was a big, big drop in mining investment. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up a chart here, but we can see that uh, in Australian mining investment, we had years mm. of negative growth where less and less money was being pumped into mining. That was sort of reflected at you know, a lot of different countries around the world. And that's basically what the world is about to go through. That lack of investment for the next few years is going to mean we're going to have less supply coming online for the next few years. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that's really going to be another factor playing into the supply di demand dynamic in the coming period. Yeah, well, absolutely right. Up until maybe what a year or so ago, the main focus has all been around iron ore, hasn't it? Right. Yep. So you know, everyone's been so so focused on getting production costs down on iron ore, uh, production up on iron ore, because uh, there's such a demand out of China for iron ore, and that demand's still there. Look, there's some threats on the iron ore demand from the China part, but the interesting part of what we were talking about before with infrastructure though, if most of the large economies go for infrastructure spending to rebound their economies after uh, COVID, then iron ore is gonna be in high demand in all these other countries as well. So there's a unique situation in this area, I believe in metals and mining as a whole, where before it was all about iron ore, Iron ore is still going to hold strong, maybe not as strong as it has been recently, around 180 US dollars. You know, he's going to come off these highs at some point, um, but you're going to be in this unique situation potentially in the next few years where you'll have the, this whole base metal space, um, you know, really quite strong on the back of green energy and infrastructure, but also iron ore holding strong at the same time. Absolutely. So I think you make a very good point. You know, China is obviously the most important country for iron ore demand on earth. Uh, they, they produce, I think, just over half of the world's steel at the moment. But, you know, there's still roughly 50% being produced around the rest of the world. Uh, and, you know, iron ore demand remains very, very strong. And, you know, a lot of things use steel in their production. Um, you know, you talk about infrastructure, but, you know, also if, if you're building uh, high tech uh, vehicles and things like that, there's going to be steel in there That's right. regardless. Um, the other thing I, I sort of mention is we've been hearing about weak iron ore prices for three years now. Um, you know, the, the, the expected halving of iron ore prices, uh, you know, started at uh, 100 US a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now 180 a ton and, and they're expecting it to come back to 100 a ton. It, it has to come back eventually. You've got mines in uh, South America that should come online or are expected to provide more volume over the next few years. You've got mines in Africa, you know, that, that should be uh, providing more volume as well. But, you know, every time there's another reason, there's another, uh, you know, issue in South America, another issue in Africa. And, you know, that, that projected supply just hasn't materialized. And so if you'd sort of disregarded iron ore for the past three years as, you know, many in the market would want you to do, uh, you'd you'd really be sitting behind at this point. Mm. The iron ore miners have done extremely well, and we think mm. they're going to continue to do extremely well. And just moving into the future technologies side of things, I think uh, the green steel and the um, pursuit of hydrogen by Fortescue 
will will so- certainly pay off in the steel space. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so you know, you, you kind of got it, got our view on the commodity space. Now, what stock, Sammy, are we going to trade on the back of this? Well, I think you have to give it to BHP for positioning themselves almost mm-hmm. perfectly for you know the expected uh, you know commodity super cycle. They've been selling down their um, coal and petroleum assets, mm-hmm. and they've been building up their copper nickel assets. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they're our biggest copper producer, I believe they're our biggest nickel producer as well, and they're trying to make them more significant parts of their business. So just in terms of a one-stop shop for, for commodities moving forwards, it's hard to look past BHP. Yep. But if you want to drill down into the individual commodities, uh, which you know we're happy to do, uh, there's definitely some attractive businesses there. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, from the copper space, Sandfire Resources represents a very, very attractive value proposition at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may have to wait a couple of years there as they get the Chikudu project in Botswana and the Black Butt project in Montana in the US up and going. Um, big fan of Copper Mountain, uh, yeah. which is a Canadian uh, copper miner. They are dual listed here. Uh, and then on the smaller end of things, uh, from a value perspective, Aerith Resources is also yeah. very, very attractive. Uh, then we move into something like nickel. Uh, it's hard to look past, as a pure nickel play, nickel mines. Yeah. Um, very, very uh, profitable mine that they operate um, and still you know, trading at a very attractive valuation despite what's happened to nickel prices. Yep. So there you go. There's a few stocks for you to go out and have a look at in this space. If you don't have any exposure to this space in your portfolio, we uh, strongly suggest to all of our clients to get some uh, exposure to metals and mining, particularly around copper or nickel, uh, and also any cheap iron ore miners are always on my list, guys. Okay, so I'm always a holder of that space. Until I see iron ore correct, I will be a holder of that space. Um, okay, well, that's all I've really got for today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so um, make sure you subscribe, guys. Please support us. Uh, And also, if you want to know a little bit more about what we do as a company, uh, you can find the links uh, in the description below. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now.